is voicing two. As we start thinking about voicing, it's actually the last step in a long process of assuring that each note reacts the same way as the next in a controllable, consistent manner. Everything from the stringing being just right to the action, to the bedding, to everything. Um, our goal is to have a transparent piece of equipment between the artist and the music that comes out. While we may be working very diligently to work with each individual little part, the pianist just wants to know that when they press this key and when they press this key, the same result and it becomes a predictable like running up and down the stairs that are the same distance apart. If you could imagine running up and down stairs that it was each a little bit different size or shape, you could probably do it, but it would be very difficult and would require a lot of concentration. So the final step is the voicing of actually working with the structure of the hammer as opposed to all the action that has to go before. Now you can see the catch-22 that, that that puts a learning technician in. After all, how do you get good at voicing but by doing a lot of voicing? And how do you do a lot of voicing if it's the last step of an entire expensive process? How is someone going to hire you to voice if you don't have the experience? So our next um, installment will be to look at how can you learn voicing bit by bit. So if we're not going to start here, with a nice piano with well-shaped hammers, hammers fitted to the strings, um, the action all in good shape. How do you start voicing? Um, the process is, we're going to make an assumption, which may or may not be right, is that originally the hammers were voiced properly. And that through wear and constant pounding, you're going to have some hammers that do not sound the same as others. So our big assumption originally is that the, the piano was voiced correctly to begin with. You're going to come into a piano and instead of saying, I'm changing the entire voice of the piano, there, there's actually two um, ways of looking at voices or two ways of changing the voice. One is the overall voice. Is it too bright? Is it too dark? Am I trying to get it darker? Am I trying to get it brighter? We're not going to deal with that at all at this point, maybe later on. The second one is to say, is the piano even? Does it transition from this tone to this tone to this tone to this tone throughout the range of the piano? How are the transitions? Does it move smoothly from one section to another? So actually, the job becomes a little simpler. We're simply going to say what doesn't fit. And you're probably not going to start here, so Let's go find another piano. Okay, so here we are at another piano. And this one's actually going to be played with the other piano that I just played for you in a duet. So it's tuned to the uh, grand piano. One of the first things you may find, what we're looking for is something that sticks out. So a good chromatic scale. One thing you may find is right at the break, the first unwound string, the F, may stick out more than the others. Um, again, we're assuming the structure, the underlying structure, so whether it's a tennis ball, a golf ball, or a, or a steel ball bearing, the underlying structure of all the hammers is close. What's happened is that um, through wear, through uh, age, through compaction, um, the top layer of felt will have compacted down, causing a little bit harder. 
one of the quickest ways, easiest way, and short, shortest lived is to just, we're going to brush a little bit across here. All we're doing is, um, is uh, fluffing up the first layer of felt. And that can cure some of that problem right there. Again, this will play right in again and it will go away. So this is something you can try just to get used to with your ear. Looking for something that sticks out from the rest of the piano. The next area you'll run into is notes that are played more often. The first time I noticed this was, was for a Suzuki piano student who plays essentially pounding in those diatonic notes. So I'd find that the C and the G's were all harsher. And actually on this piano the C is a little bit a little bit brighter. Now again another surface technique that's not a brush but it's a needle is just to come in at the base, the very edge of the string groove, maybe a half a millimeter, maybe a millimeter. What we're trying to do is just this, this raises a cone of interference of raised felt underneath a little bit deeper so it lasts a little bit longer. Those are two techniques you can use. Another that I talked about before is to actually come in from the side, support the hammer, and just at the edge, the very top edge of the string groove, you're going to put a needle underneath the hammer, underneath in, in the felt, maybe only two millimeters deep. And since these are all surface or just subsurface treatments, they won't last as long and there's less danger of going uh, really bad for you. So at the end of a tuning, again, tuning is interactive with it, so some of the notes that you may notice sticking out are actually a little bit out of tune. So don't jump to the needles or brush right away. Make sure that it is solidly in tune before you begin just uh, needling the piano. And again, if you go too far, sandpaper paddle will pull any work that you've done out because it's so shallow but if you go gently and slowly you should be able to make incremental changes to the piano without running yourself into the trouble of getting a real muffled pe finding a real muffled note after you've been working on it so just go gently at the end of each tuning find the one note that sticks out the two notes that stick out and start getting used to training your ear Again, you'll run into problems of loose hammer heads or maybe some loose screws, and that will give a very particular sound, so you don't want to try and treat that. Again, we talked about how originally you'd want to do this at the end of a long, long process of regulating, um, making sure the stringing is right, making sure all the hammers are shaped exactly right. Um, but instead, I want you to try and train your ear to train your fingers and your hands to make small adjustments to the piano to even out the tone, to make it a little bit more transparent to the performer so that they don't have to work so hard to get an even tone.